In this video, I'm looking further into the print quality on the new build AM8 and how it behaves on higher print speeds and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I'd like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So this is part 3 of the AM8 build series and in this part we're taking a further look into the build quality, the print quality and how the printer behaves at higher print speeds. And in the last video I've already shown you some impressive first results printing a small benchy and this time I'm starting to print larger things and we're gonna do a speed test printing high speed benchies and comparing the results. So let's get started. So the first bigger object that I printed is this Christmas deer object. It's a very nice one. Um, I've linked it in the description down below. So let's have a closer look at the print quality now. So what I can see here is really that the layer quality here is very high. I'm really satisfied how this one came out. Um, there's minimal issues with overhangs, but this is printed without support, so I'm still pretty happy uh, how this comes out. Then what you can notice here, there is a little bit of stringing going on, nothing really bad. Probably I would have to increase my retract a little bit to fix this, uh, but overall I'd say this is a really nice result. So this thing is gonna get post-processed soon, so I'm going to spray some glue on it, and then we're putting some glitter on uh, so this is a really nice present for my parents so coming to the next print which is this vase i've printed it in vase mode so it really printed fast and it's also 220 millimeters high so i really went up to the highest possible print height with the am8 and yeah it turned out really really nice and there's actually no issues visible here and if you take a closer look i really love how it shines and reflects the light and i think there's no post processing needed at all so this is also a nice present there is probably better gold filaments out there but this one was an old roll of gold filament that i still had probably gonna try something more fancy in the future um, but this one is really really nice so after printing these two larger prints i was pretty confident that i could go into the speed testing so let's first have a look at the first banshee again from the last video which was printed at 60 millimeters per second As we've already seen, this first Banshee quality is really, really nice. So nothing really bad here. Uh, everything looks really nice and clean. There's no stringing and all the layers look pretty good. It was also printed using the default acceleration and jerk. And these are normally 400 millimeters per square second and a jerk value of 15 millimeters per second. So let's go a little bit more into what these values actually mean. The acceleration value means how fast the nozzle is going to speed up so how steep is the acceleration curve and the jerk value determines what is the lowest value that the nozzle starts moving with so if it's not moving then it will start by default with 15 millimeter per second and from there it's gonna ramp up to the highest speed that you set using the acceleration value so the second print I wanted to try out was just using a higher maximum print speed and I wanted to see if that makes any huge difference and I set it to 150 millimeters per second. And the print time of the first Benji was 90 minutes and with the 150 millimeter per second, guess what? The print time didn't change. And why is that not changing? The reason for that is because this is a very small object you cannot really accelerate to the maximum speed because before you can actually reach the maximum speed the print nozzle has already reached the end of the print object and already slows down so it's just not possible to accelerate to the speed so if you would have a much larger object uh, with larger distances to travel then the maximum print speed will actually get reached even with a low acceleration value uh, and because of this fact we also don't see any noticeable difference in print quality with this second benchy 
Now coming to Benchy number three, which was printed at the same speed, so 150 millimeter per second, but this time I set the acceleration value to 1500 millimeters per second. And that already caused the print to speed up a little bit. So instead of taking 90 minutes to print, it just took 68 minutes. So we already chopped off 22 minutes from our print time. However, what you still can see if we look at the Cura estimations is that Cura estimated this print to durate 48 minutes and it still took 68 minutes. So there is still a pretty huge difference in what Cura estimates and what the real print time is. And if we look at the print quality of this third Banshee with a higher acceleration value, we can already see a little bit of a quality decrease. It's nothing major and I also don't see any major signs of ringing. So it's just a little bit of a noticeable decrease, but nothing, nothing really bad yet. So let's now finally have a look at Benchy number four, which was also printed with 150 millimeters per second, but this time I set the acceleration value to 3000 millimeters per second. And I also turned up the jerk value to 50 millimeter per second. So experiences shows that you can set it to about one third of the maximum print speed uh, without uh, causing any severe issues. So this time the Cura estimation for the print time was 36 minutes and the real print time was 58 minutes. So this uh, shows, okay, you can really tweak and get lower print times, but let's have a look at the quality this time. This time you can really see that the print quality has decreased quite a lot compared to the first one. Still. I mean, this is something that I've already seen coming out of a normal ANIT A8 without any tuning. So uh, when we consider that this is now an AM8, it has a much stiffer frame, we can say maybe uh, with some good confidence that we can get about the same result that we get uh, with a default ANIT A8, but at a much higher print speed. So we can go for this kind of print speed, but I also ran into another issue, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, because I switched down for a third larger print, I switched back to the default settings, going at a lower speed, and then guess what happened? So this is my third larger object that I wanted to print right after the maximum speed test, and it started pretty well, and I really like how it came out. But you can see at the upper region, so around about in the last one or two centimeters of the print, the print had started detaching. Um, so it started to uh, create a lot of stringing and then the print was pretty much messed up. But what actually happened quite early during the sprint is that my 3D touch holder broke. And I mean, that wasn't really causing the stringing issues, but that showed me, okay, during the maximum speed test, the printer really pushed uh, really, really hard. That really gave it the rest and uh, just broke it because probably of these high jerk values that caused a lot of vibrations in the whole printer frame. So what can I tell you about this is really um, you have to find that maximum uh, acceleration and jerk value. If your printer really starts vibrating uh, a lot, you might want to turn that down because on the long run, if you really try to print at these kind of high values in terms of acceleration and jerk, uh, it's gonna wear down your printer parts a lot faster than usual. But let's have a quick look at the print quality of the Dragon overall. I still like it very much, especially the print quality in the overhang areas is really, really nice. So nothing bad happened here. And this is really a stunning result. Unfortunately, I didn't finish it and I ran out of gold filament afterwards, so I will have to get some new one to reprint this because I really, really like it. Let's have a little bit of a conclusion now what this means in terms of what we can expect from the AM8. So you should have seen that when we turn up the values of acceleration and jerk, we can still get pretty good results. We have to take care a little bit that we don't overdo it, so we don't create high vibrations in the frame, but overall we can expect pretty good results even at higher speeds. And that what 
what I really was hoping for. Now, what I'm going to do in the future is probably use higher acceleration and jerk values, probably not that high, maybe something around 1000 acceleration and maybe 20 of jerk, but I don't want to do this all the time. Certainly I will most of the time print at 60 millimeter per second, maybe with these higher acceleration values just to get some more speed, but not to compromise on the quality too much. So that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. I hope you got some value out of it. If that is the case, please hit the like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel. And we're gonna see each other next time on this channel for another video about 3D printing and more. Have a good week, bye bye.